Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, just doing a quick little review on the uh, Mini LMT. Picked this up yesterday. Took it for a quick, quick drive. I couldn't resist. Opened up the package. I had to drive it um, before I really checked it over. And luckily, everything was good to go. But I've seen on some Facebook groups um, and even some YouTube videos, some guys were having a couple little issues here and there, which is kind of normal for uh, a new release. You know, it's a whole new assembly line, I'm sure. There might be some new people building these. Maybe they make some mistakes, um, you know, kind of hard to say. But um, anyway, I just uh, I just finished going over kind of the whole truck, which is kind of why I made this video. I just wanted to kind of point out a couple things to you guys that you're gonna wanna just at least take a peek at and, and check before, probably before you run it. Especially if you're gonna be giving these as a Christmas gift to your kids, maybe you wanna open the box, you know, a couple days before, like now, and uh, just maybe, kind of throw a battery in it, test it, make sure the steering works, make sure everything's good to go, and uh, just check over, make sure all the fasteners are there and that they're tight and uh, nothing is, you know, wonky or clicking or loose. Uh, just before, you know, they, they open it up Christmas morning and start ripping it around and then you run into an issue. So it's a good practice to do with uh, any brand new RC car, especially something that is a completely new release. You know, there are sometimes little quality control issues that you can catch early on and it's gonna save you a big headache. So let's just go over a few things. I mean, the first thing is just gonna be checking to make sure that all of the fasteners are there, all the screws are there. You know, there was someone that was missing a screw on their front servo I saw on the Facebook group. Um, uh, there were a few people that had some clicking noises coming from the rear diffs. Uh, I saw something about people having some issues with the drive shafts. And I think some of this can be avoided uh, if you just kind of give it a, a, a thorough like once over right off the bat before you drive it. So let's just start down here. I mean, aside from literally just going over, take a driver. I mean, all you need is a 1.5. And I would try to find like a decent quality driver. This is an MIP. Yeah, they're a little pricey, but if you're gonna use it for other things, spend a little extra, get a good quality driver. Um, the kit does not come with a 1.5 driver or Allen key. It really just comes with your standard uh, like wheel nut wrench. Um, so you're gonna wanna pick up something like, like you know, at least, a decent driver and just kind of go over and, and just check everything make sure they're all snug it, it doesn't you really don't have to wrench on these these are tiny little screws and I uh, just want to make sure that they're all just kind of snug and you know that they're all there that none are missing but uh, something you want to pay particular attention to are the uh, the little pin screws that hold your drive shafts to the output shaft so it would be essentially this one right here there's one on the inside, uh, and then there's one here, and then there's one there. So there's a, there's a total of four. To get to the ones on the inside, you gotta take this bottom uh, plate off that exposes the uh, the center drive uh, transmission here. Um, and then there's little kind of uh, little cutouts in the plastic that allow you to get the driver down into that uh, pin screw. So essentially you wanna just kind of loosen it <clears throat> and see, so I already had these out. I put a little drip of uh, blue Loctite on them, but what I could say is my front one, this front one here actually came out pretty easily. There was no thread lock on it at all. The other ones were all fairly tight and I think it had more to do with just the quality of the threading into these, uh, you know, the, the, the end of the transmission here. It was just like the threads aren't perfect and maybe that's good in a way because, you know, if you loosen them, they loosened a teeny bit and then they kind of got tight again. So those would actually hold in place without any thread lock on them. This front one here um, was loose enough where if it did kind of break free a tiny bit, I could see that maybe kind of vibrating its way out and falling out. So I pulled, I had, you know, all of them, when I did check them, I did take them out and put a little Loctite on them. Um, I said the two centers you got to get in here. And this will actually expose your center uh, little uh, bevel gear and ring gear in the center here. There is a locker. There is no diff in the center. Um, and you could just double check that, make sure that that gear in there is greased. There was a good amount of grease on it, like kind of more surrounding it. So I just kind of spread it back onto the teeth of the, uh, the gear there. Um, I did actually pull apart the entire rear axle. I removed it from the truck. I pulled out the diff and I went ahead and re-greased it with some 5,000 um, diff grease. And it definitely feels smoother. I could, 
If you want to have a little bit more of a locked up action on the rear, you want to go way heavier than this. You probably want to go with a much thicker grease. I don't think it's really going to stay in there no matter what you do. I think it's just always going to be an open diff, but I just wanted to check more over um, for the shimming and just make sure because there were one or two posts I saw where people already had a clicking diff uh, in the rear, which means that that ring and pinion gear is not meshing properly. So. I did find that there is a little shim on the outside here, right on the uh, the pinion shaft, in between the pinion shaft and the uh, drive shaft here. And then there was a little shim between the bearing on the uh, and the diff on the ring gear side internally. So I'm gonna take a peek at the exploded diagram, uh, parts diagram, and make sure that it shows them and make sure it doesn't show two shims. I, sometimes it doesn't show any shims and it's more of like an assembly kind of decision at the time. So I'm curious to see uh, and I think I'll, I'll post that up in the video. All right, just to confirm, here's the exploded view. It does not show any shims in the front or the rear. My diffs, what I would recommend if you don't want to go through the truck, it's, it's fairly involved. You got to pull apart like every screw on this rear axle. I don't know, there was probably like 20 little screws that you got to pull apart. You got to take apart the entire thing to get to it. Um, what I would recommend is just, you know, hold your wheels and just try to rotate your drive shaft back and forth. There should not be excessive play. There should be the tiniest little bit of play back and forth. If you're getting a lot you know, you could even hold the drive shaft and try to move the wheels. You got to move them both at the same time. If you're getting any more than that, um, there might be an issue. I'm, I'm thinking maybe the people who had issues, maybe one of those shims is missing. I'm not sure. They would have to take it apart and see. But I wouldn't be surprised. It's the tiniest, thinnest little washer. It's a possibility. Um, but mine seems like it's fine. Like I said, I drove it briefly and I had no issues and I did pull it apart and I verified there is a shim here, there's a shim there. I even tried messing around and adding a little bit thicker spacer and it just didn't work out. You really would have to have like extremely thin little shims to make this work. So I think mine is actually good to go. Um, and other than that, it, it's a little tricky to work on in that it really is just teeny tiny little screws, 1.5 driver. I did notice that the heads on some of these screws, like some of them, they fit nice and tight. Other ones were almost a little, not quite stripped, but just not really, didn't feel great. And I had to put a lot of pressure on them. So I don't know if that's just like an assembly issue, you know, whatever driver they're using, if it did kind of skip once or twice, it might start to round them out. So that's what I'm saying. Like use a good quality driver, something that's new and has like a fresh, sharp uh, tip on it just in case you don't want to go and strip any of these out. So um, yeah, other than that, I haven't noticed anything else. I did, I was messing around last night and I did, I have these little wheel chocks um, that I use for working on my truck and I was doing backflips off of that and I landed on one of them and I did bend one of these links already, just the slightest little bend. Uh, not a big deal, I was able, just when I had it apart, I noticed it and I just kind of bent it back with my hands. So these might be, Maybe if you're landing on things, something pointy with these, they're probably gonna bend. So just be careful with that, guys. You don't wanna land this thing on anything really hard that is um, not gonna give right on the center of those. Um, other than that, I wanna talk about one other thing. <clears throat> so when I initially found out that this used the, um, the IC, and I'll show you guys if you're not familiar here. So at first I'm like, man, where the hell do you plug the battery? And I thought the wires were like plugged in there. So it's actually, the connector for the battery is kind of in this little holder here on the side and it is an IC2 connector, right? So the battery looks like this, as it's your little like smart connector in the middle there. So at first I was excited because all of my, my Mini B and my Mini T, I use the EC2, which is this type. And on the larger one, so if you go up to an EC3 and an IC3, they fit together, no problem and EC5 and an IC5 fit together, no problem. So I'm thinking the two, why wouldn't it be the same thing? But then when you look at this, so you have, you know, you have your, your kind of squared off flat edge and then you have your rounded here, you have your square and your round. If you try to fit these together, I mean, they just don't, you can't, you can, and it's not good. It's, it's not fitting. So to try to use any existing batteries that I have for my minis, are not going to plug into here. So that kind of annoyed me. And then I noticed, oh, well they include an adapter. Awesome, that must be what that's for. It's not. So what it is, this is the battery that came with the LMT. 
um, it adapts the IC2 to an EC2. So now technically, I mean, the good thing is I could use this battery that came with the LMT in my other minis, but I can't use the ones from my minis in here <clears throat> without making another adapter. So now I got to make an adapter that's reverse of this. I need, um, I guess the female EC2 to a male um, <clears throat> IC2, you know, so it would look like that. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. Uh, I guess the other option is I could just convert this that might be the simpler thing because I have EC2 connectors. I could just cut these wires, convert this over to an EC2, and this way everything works. And then this battery, I will just use this adapter and run it as an EC2. Um, the other annoying part is that if you have other batteries that use, like perfect example, this battery has the balance lead, and I could charge this off of any of my normal chargers that I use for my bigger cars. Um, no balance lead on here. So I think there is, I gotta look into it. I think there is an adapter for these where you can, cause technically that is the balance lead. So I think there is an adapter. It would be something like this that, um, you know, whatever it converts it into would also include a separate um, balance lead like that, that you can plug into a regular charger. Cause the charger that comes with this, it's a little USB charger. I don't really know how long it takes. I'd have to run this thing fully down and then fully charge it and time it and see, but I'm assuming it's a pretty slow charger. It's a tiny little USB charger, so, but anyway, so that was like a minor kind of annoyance. It's like you get into all these like battery connector issues in a way, you know, it's like you just want to settle on one thing and keep all of your vehicles the same, but um, not a huge deal. I may end up changing out this ESC anyway. I may go with like a Hobby Wing brushed ESC see if I can get a little more punch out of it, or I may even um, do a brushless uh, setup on here. But overall, guys, I would say that my particular truck here, um, I didn't really notice anything uh, in terms of quality control issues. They said the shims were in the rear. I assume the front, being that it really almost has even less play than the rear, I assume that that's all right. I. I don't know, at some point I might take it apart just to double check. There was not a lot of grease on the rear diff at all. That would be my one thing I could say. So that if you did want to um, just pull it apart, especially if you want to kind of get a little more, uh, you know, locked up rear action, you could go with a thicker grease. But I just don't know how much longer it's going to stay in there. It's just going to fling off in my opinion. So, But there really wasn't a lot of grease. I'm glad I took it apart just to get it greased up. It definitely feels a lot smoother. And it did kind of it did kind of cut back on the, uh, the diff action here a little bit. It, it does feel like it has a little more resistance. So I think it's going to drive a little bit nicer. Um, but that's it, guys. I have not found any other issues. Just some other tips. Just be aware. If you're not familiar with um, any of the Spectrum controllers, a lot of them do have a 50, 75, 100 throttle setting. So if you get this out of the box, I think mine came at, at 100, but if it just seems like it's really slow, just make a note that you could flip this over to 100%. Uh, so that would limit your throttle. And then also make sure that the SR knob here, crank it all the way up. That's your steering rate. Uh, mine was set really low and I wasn't getting full steering. So just make sure, turn that all the way up to the, and then just keep an eye. Make sure you're, you're not over steering one direction or the other. Make sure your servo saver on the front here is centered properly. So just keep an eye on that and then just adjust your trim and should be good to go. So that's it guys. If you want to see my rebuild of the rear axle and uh, more detail on adding grease to the rear diff, I'm going to post that up in a different video because I, filmed it earlier today and ended up being like a really long, like I had an hour worth of uh, of um, video and I was gonna do this all as one, in one shot, but it was just way too long. I know nobody would watch all of that. So if you are interested in, in a deep dive into the, the rear axle, which would be the same as the front axle, um, yeah, check out the, uh, the other video. I'll try to post it up right after this one. Um, so if you guys are interested or if maybe if you suspect an issue and you wanna pull it apart and you're unsure, um, check that out. Um, yeah, other than that, I really, I, I, I'm pretty impressed with this. It's a, it's a really cool little rig. It is so identical to the full size. I, I don't have my full size LMT anymore. I kind of regret selling it. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but this, I think I'm going to actually get more use out of, especially now that it's winter and I could run this thing indoors. Uh, and a few of my buddies got them too. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, 
yeah, other than that, good to go. So yeah, stay tuned some, for some more videos with this. I may do a brushless conversion, I don't know. I have one sitting in um, a Teton right over there that I think would be perfect for this. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see a brushless conversion done on this. I could do it. The thing I'm afraid of is it's gonna be crazy fast. I know the Teton with the Hobbywing brushless set up, set up in there is really crazy fast. And um, I don't know, I don't wanna just break this thing this quick. I don't know what parts are available for these. I have a feeling that the brushless kit I have is gonna be a, a little bit like insane on this truck. It could be fun. You know, it's definitely gonna be fun, but I wanna make sure that maybe I have some backup parts first. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys wanna see that. Maybe I would do it just for a video, test it, do a little um, speed run with it, um, stock, and then with the brushless, and just see the difference and see how crazy it is. But the other issue is, um, it's really cold out here. It was like 30 degrees here today. And if I run this outside, I just know that this plastic is gonna be super brittle, so. Um, Definitely, I've broken so many RC cars in the cold weather that I, I feel like I've learned my lesson, but I probably haven't. I'll probably continue doing it because it's it's fun and you get bored in the winter. So anyway, guys, uh, yeah, if you want, check out the other video on the axle rebuild. Um, yeah, if there's any anything else you want me to kind of check out, if you're waiting to get yours and you're curious about something, drop it in the comments. And if I get enough questions about anything in particular, um, I will do another quick video. So. Thanks guys, uh, if you like these type of videos and you wanna see more on this or any of the other cars in the background or over there, there's a bunch, um, subscribe and uh, hit the like button. I appreciate it, later guys. Hey guys, so also another uh, quick little tip. If you wanna know how guys are doing, um, kinda like uh, nose wheelies, like almost like just going from uh, forward immediately into reverse and kinda doing a little nose wheelie, uh, in reverse, I forget if it's called like a moonwalk in monster truck world. Um, these jumpers right here on the uh, ESC receiver combo, the one in the front is whether you're running a LiPo or a nickel metal battery, so that should be in the rightmost position, which it comes set up like that. This jumper right here in the right position is, you'll see right here, forward reverse brake, which is like your standard RC setup. If you move it, if you pull this out, move it to the left position, put it back in, and there, you know, you can see there's three pins in here. You're basically jumping out the two right pins or the two left pins. If you move this top one to the left, put it back down on the two left pins, you get a uh, forward reverse. So it's like a, essentially it's a crawler mode. It's like any RC crawler is set up. Um, so way cool for doing tricks. So that's uh, just another little tip. Oh, and also uh, while I'm, I'm here, I'll show you guys. I did actually convert this over. Let me show you here. Um, I converted this over to, can we see in there? Um, an EC2 connector. So I just soldered on a, uh, an EC2. I filed it down a little bit and it fit into the stock holder here. That's it guys.